In the first video of this series, we have covered the project overview and we have seen how Houdini could be set up with the SwirlKit project. If you haven't checked out the video, just follow the link to see the video. In this session, we'll see how we can perform queries using Houdini. So let's dive in. So now with Houdini set up and our project up and running, let's understand how we fetch data with Houdini in a SwatKit project. So to fetch data in a SwatKit project, Houdini follows the convention that SwatKit follows to have a page or a loader function. What we need to do is we need to create a file ending with .gql extension parallel to the page which needs to retrieve some data using GraphQL query, right? So go ahead in your code base there parallel to your page.swell file, create another file called page.gql. Now this file works pretty much like a page.ts file only or a js file only because the purpose of this file is to return the data or to serve the response that could be leveraged by page.swell file, right? So we'll rename this to GQL and there what we need to provide is we need to provide the the GraphQL query. Now in this file what you need to do is you need to provide the GraphQL query that is required to say pull data from a GraphQL service, right? So what we do, we'd use one of the methods made available by the Mockshop API. Mockshop API gives us a get a product query which helps us retrieve one single product from the Shopify store, right? We'll just copy this and paste it over here. And here we will just say query product. Save this. Once you'll save this, come back to your terminal, you'll see Houdini generating an error for you, right? It's saying that, hey, the scanner is not available, right? So you need to provide a scanner. We'll dive into this in a bit more detail, but for now, let's just come back to our code base and there comment out this part. Save it, go back to your terminal, and there it's showing that a product auto generation magic has already happened, right? So now come back to your code base again, and there inside your page.12 file, Add a script block use the lang as ts and they'll say export let data once. So this data will be populated by your queries response, right? Do one more thing, say import type page data. from Houdini. And here, just say that the type is of type page data. Once this is done, we need to access the data that's available inside the data prop, right? So to access that, we'll use the dollar sign and there we'll say that we need to access one particular product out of the data that are, that's available to us, right? So now it's type, it's type with the product structure, right? If you say something like products or product, it will be an error, right? So type product over here, access the data, and here, just remove all of this and just do something like dollar product data. As you can see, there are multiple properties like errors, fetching, partial, source, stale, variables, right? But we are just interested in data at this point. So we'll just say, hey, just stringify this value. Save this, go back to your page, 
then it says that there's an internal error. The reason for internal error is it cannot read the properties of undefined reading data. What does it, what does this mean? This means that though we are exposing the data prop, we are getting the data available, we are able to infer the type and we are able to output the data. There is no underlying mechanism to populate this data. And why this happened? This happened because our Houdini config.js file isn't pointing to the static schema yet. This needs to be pointed to. So the schema needs to be exactly pointed to here. Otherwise, Houdini won't work, right? You need to either provide the full schema or you need to tell about the schema path, a static representation of your schema. Without this, Houdini may generate the types, Houdini may generate a basic generic structure, but it won't be able to do much beyond that, right? So put a schema path over here and there refer to the file which is available in our project directory, the schema GraphQL, right? Save this, come back to your terminal, exit this, rerun npm run dev, It's generating a runtime, unchanged one. So the project is started now. And now we have the response available. Right? As simple as that. What you are required to provide from your end is just a very easily maintainable page SQL file containing your query that, that works as your querying contract. And then Houdini takes this query and calls the API server, right? Populates your data prop, generates the type automatically for you, and you get uh, the, all of the response in a really simplified form with all of the goodies. This data is actually a store, right? So it has all of the store properties. So what happened to our load function, right? This is effectively the loader for us, right? It's taking care of, you know, calling a GraphQL server and passing in the queries and then retrieving the record so that it could be served to the pages. Right. To understand query variables passing, let's go ahead and create a product detail page. Within the roots folder, create a new folder. T. We can create another folder with a dynamic ID parameter. Within the ID folder, just copy this and this and place it inside the ID folder. Elf. Elf. Rename. Page equal. And a page short file. Once that's done, let's go ahead and change the name to product detail. Change this to ID. as we are now looking forward to take it from the ID parameter available to us in this dynamic page. Save this. Open page short file. And then change the name of the product to product detail. Save it as product detail. You can change it back to Houdini. Come back to your terminal, npm run dev. Yeah, whatever ID is not defined by operation product detail. No problem. We need to basically say that the ID is of type ID and here we need to provide ID save this add compile for us cool come back 
product detail is available here product detail is available here there seems to be some typing issue let's just change this to Houdini this makes the typing issue go away now just come back to our page and there this is our home page now go ahead and type P and then type say the ID name over there it's null is it's null because the reason is if you look at the ID the ID is basically not just a numeric value or a string value it's basically a product identification protocol or something right where you have this group ID G ID and then Shopify inside Shopify your product so you you just you cannot make it work just by providing this particular ID right you will have to provide this entire ID as a parameter over here right so go back there it's null for us right so let's come back copy this entire thing go back and here type P and then type this entire identifier it's forever not found for us and the reason is currently the page label parameter identification just identifies something called a ID right so if I can show you we just have this ID right so this needs to be changed so that it's able to expect or accept not just one identifier like this one but this entire string that starts from GID and ends with the actual identifier right so we'll go ahead and change this ID to the spread operator identifier which is capable of accepting entire paths right change this to ID no problem just rectify this put a dot over here save this now our product is rendering all fine right so here's how you can manage both a static call as well as you can manage something like a dynamic call with the ID parameter all inferred from your path identifier which circuit offers so this sort of automatic passing of the parameters and passing it on to this load function and then load function taking up the responsibility to take the ID and run the GQL query and then returning the response is now taken care for you with this one single GQL file right and similarly just like the previous scenario Houdini is able to kind of reduce the boilerplate code required to say pass the parameter and pass it on to the GQL query by itself right which leads to a really cleaner structure whether you are kind of calling static queries or you are calling something as dynamic as this one right such the data property you also have other states that can be used to know the state of the API call right so you can have something like dollar product detail and there you can check errors fetching partial source stale variables and all that sort of a stuff right so here you can just check if the data is getting fetched and then, so based on whether the API call has resolved or not you can either show all of the records all available post the API call resolution or you can just show an empty state right so this could be represented as something like if product detail fetching else or if right and then you can just place it over here or you can say something like besides this you also have access to the variables right we can quickly debug an 
see what do we have in variables. Product detail. Variables. Save this. Come back. And here you can see the ID that got passed, right? So with product detail, we have access to the data for the response. Then we have access to fetching to understand if the request is in flight. We have access to variables. If say this was you know, for dynamic parameter passing, we also have access to something called errors. If you read through the docs, they are saying it quite clearly that you know one of the responsibilities of Houdini is to move the actual fetch into a load function. You can think of the block at the top of this section as equivalent to, which means that this particular code is equivalent to this particular code, right? having exported data available in your page.sol file and then accessing individual queryable property or object is the same as accessing individual stores generated by Houdini for you and then calling a fetch and then returning the data as a response. So you are not required to do this repetitive task again and again to pull in individual stores and call the fetch methods and then serving the response. That you can express this quite expressively by just exporting the data property and then accessing the actual object that you want to have access to, right? And all of this boilerplate code is kind of taken care of for you. In this video, we have covered querying items with Houdini. We have covered how Houdini could be used to make GraphQL queries to GraphQL data layer services. And we have also seen how we can parameterize the GraphQL queries so that we can have fully dynamic data available to the front end. In the next video, we are going to be covering hooks. So see you in my next video. Bye-bye.